very good afternoon to all respected principal ma'am our head tagya madam today's speakers my colleagues and all the participants i would like to introduce in continuation of the program i would like to introduce our next speaker dr rajneesh giri sir it is my privilege to introduce uh, a knowledgeable person like sir we are very thankful to have dr rajneesh sir as a keynote speaker he is a renowned per personality in the field of bioinformatics Presently, he is working as an associate professor in the School of Basic Science, Indian Institute of Technology, Mandi. Sir completed his master's in biotechnology from BHU. He did his PhD in biochemistry from Rome. After that, he worked as post postdoctoral fellow in Canada and Rome. Uh, sir, the main focus research area of sir is biophysics, protein folding. protein engineering intrinsically disordered protein dark proteome in virus and signaling drug discovery biophysical study on zika virus proteome sir is also uh, taught many courses in their teaching career like biophysics and protein engineering genetic engineering molecular biology protein science in therapeutics and many other courses he is a member of various professional bodies like biophysical society of Biophysical Society USA, ASM, Protein Society USA, Indian Science Congress, and many more others. Sir is a joint secretary in Bioinformatics and Drug Discovery Society. Sir has many award and honors to his credit, like Innovative Young Biotechnology Award by DST Government of India, Associate Indian Academy of Science, Bangalore. Uh, he also awarded fellowship in pa Pasteur Institute. he awarded with national and international fellowship on many like uh, uh, fellowship of phd in biochemistry he also awarded jrf from csir ugc he also invited for many talks and seminar and conference and workshop sir has more than 25 publications in reputed journal with high impact factors it is our great pleasure to sir has in uh, sir as a speaker in today's workshop sir i welcome you thank you sir uh, very detailed introduction uh, i believe i am uh, audible enough uh, to you guys yes sir yeah thank you so many thanks for this kind invitation so again many thanks uh, to the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity and particularly the keynote address because this keynote address is very general but uh, on the same time i have to present my research also so both the expectations were there so in order to fulfill those expectations i will be uh, slow in the beginning where i will discuss very broad perspectives of the viruses and then i will go uh, further for uh, the very in depth uh, study so so i will speak on zika virus but before i talk about zika virus zika virus is the family of, uh, virus family it is from the family of fly viruses so the fly viruses are dengue virus uh, zika virus uh, japanese encephalitis virus west nile virus so these all viruses have quite similar structures so yeah this this is much easier so these all viruses have quite similar structures and the number of proteins are also same although yes they have some differences that's why they are different viruses so from a perspective when we think that how to think about a virus because the moment some virus come then we need to think about that okay what perspective we are going to discuss how what perspective we are going to understand and that perspective should also match with your expertise the tools techniques research methodologies whatever you have acquired your skill so my approach was way different in the sense that i took the virus study as a very outsider you can say because in my last 7 years of independent career uh 6 years has been as a virologist in the second year of my in, in fact not second year in the first year of my independent career i yeah, started uh, uh studying this var these viruses so the important thing is means 
the way the perspective i have taken is they are very small entities the first thing for a uh, just like a, a small kid thinks about that a problem that should be our approach very naive very simple so and they utilize the host machine so basically they are something which is you know having very small entity the number of proteins in a very simple term you can say there are only 10 proteins with these flavor viruses dengue virus zika virus jv and all this and still one can imagine the difficulty that with just 10 proteins they are able to hijack the whole machinery of 20000 proteins in humans so because if you if you see as a as a fight between the virus and the humans then of course their emanations and all these are their components their proteins so just 10 proteins are able to defeat often to the humans who is having 20000 proteins so that's a very 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 simple approach uh, i have taken as i started the virology in my independent career so that was a very big question and in fact to answer that i thought that okay what we do on the proteins so generally proteins have the very specific shape like alpha helical beta c ten and combinations and without structures also so my question was okay what is the magic in the shape do they keep changing the structures do they have potential to beat the system by their collaborations so <coughs> so on that perspective i have taken the disorder function paradigm it means that what is the ordered component in the protein and what is the disordered component so that because when something is disordered then it means this is open for anything when something is ordered it means very specific structure then i took up the another uh, question what was the intrinsic collaboration among each other means uh, if you guys had seen the movie 300 you may have seen that just 300 people are able to defeat more than 10000 arm uh, the army of more than 10000 soldiers so the team work what they had was intense same thing happened in the viruses also this is a hypothesis as well as some data we also got so that was my another question means the way i thought about to answer the questions of the viruses that definitely they must be collaborating or they must work as a very strong team where they are helping each other then your <coughs> replication complex formation because the replication complex is very uh, uh, very uh, means that is the most important thing in the virus uh, propagation because they need to replicate but they also need to use the host machinery on the same time some machinery they have some machinery they use by the, by the, by the host and then virus entry means how the viruses enter the human cells because that was the first one means you, you open the gate and that that they enter right so that envelope protein means the one which which is the core of the virus basically just like a football you can say so that is uh, another uh, the first very important question you can say so these were very simple questions we took which even a small kid also thinks or can think and that is the beauty of science means the more simplest you think the more in depth and complex problems you can solve of course the techniques used to be a bit complex often time to time so you can see this this virus is having just these ten proteins the capsid protein which encapsulates the genome of the virus this rna so this is your capsid and this is the rna so it, his job is to bind with the rna hold it and package it then the second is pr and m 
The third is the envelope protein, which you can see the outer surface you are seeing is all envelope. So, and then inside there is five non-structural proteins, NS1, and, no, uh, seven non-structural proteins, NS1, NS2A, NS2B, NS3, NS3 is having two parts, the N-terminal is the protease, and the C-terminal is the helicase enzyme. NS4A, which is again a transmembrane protein, peptide 2K, NS4B, which is a transmembrane protein, and then NS5 protein, which uh, which is uh, of two parts, methyl transferase and RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So these are the uh, components of the virus. And now you, for a student, one can think that there are 20,000 proteins in the universe. So the moment we think about a virus, we think, okay, they are very small. They don't have the numbers. They don't have the components. They don't have those required uh, sufficient uh, emanations to attack us. But actually, they keep attacking. So that is the question, is why there are just 10 proteins are attacking the whole human system, which is having 20,000 proteins. So for that, what we did that we cloned all the proteins of the virus, Zika virus in the lab. So we have all the bacterial uh, plasmids as well as the animal plasmids. So we, and then th this is the more practical approach what now I am saying, technical and theoretical approach. So how, what are the questions I'm going to answer? So the first aim was to do the drug discovery. And in drug discovery, because this is very important, once one is the to under, keep understanding the virus. And in parallel, you keep doing the drug discovery also so that the problem is solved, rather than just saying that, okay, yes, we are trying to understand the problem. So we are, our lab is actually trying to understand the problem from a structured perspective, aggregation perspective. But at the same time, our core goal is to do the drug discovery also. And these all events are going in parallel. All the research is going in parallel. So in drug discovery, uh, what we, we did in, uh, we actually started this work in uh, 2016. And uh, in 2016, we uh, synthesized the plasmid, the DNA of this, uh, uh, the plasmid containing the, <coughs> The, the DNA was synthesized by Genescript USA. And then we had the clone, the plasmid, you can say. We purified the protein in the lab. So it was purified by, PhD, by my physician, Ankur. So here he purified this protein, you can see here. And then after the purifications, he performed the enzyme assays. Because this is a protease enzyme. And protease enzyme, in fact, I will, will show you what it is, actually. Just a minute. So, protease enzyme actually is responsible to chop off different proteins. Means because this Zika virus is having these 10 proteins in two peptides. And then protease, the virus protease actually uh, cut them in different individual proteins. And those individual proteins, uh, these viral proteases, as well as some host proteases are also there. So the protease is that much important. Because the moment you block the protease activity of the virus, then the proteins will not get mature. And that way, the virus will not propagate, not survive, not replicate. So that is a very important target and the first major target. So we uh, established the enzymosis. And after this, uh, in the parallel, we were doing the docking studies using an FDA approved drug library. So in the FDA approved drug library, we, we targeted that uh, library on the active site of the protease enzyme. We did the docking studies. After the docking studies, we, yeah. Uh, after the docking studies, we went ahead for performing more extra precision docking. And after those, we performed the simulation studies. And after simulation studies, basically you can say simulations are the theoretical validation 
of your talking studies. And then we had the question that, okay, yes, in docking and simulation, it is working. So we took the top six compounds where the second compound was um, hydroxychloroquine and the first was metogentron. Here, the next question came in our mind was, okay, theoretically it works, but what about experimentally? Suppose theoretically it is working, but experimentally don't work, then what is the point of uh, going forward? So then we performed the enzyme inhibition studies, experimental studies we performed. We found that the inhibition constant was 94 micromolar and uh, by linear bug plots. So here our journey from our lab was having some limit limitations and the virus culture facility was not there. Because in India, Zika virus is considered by Department of Biotechnology Government of India right, as a BSL-3 virus. So you need a biosafety level 3 lab. So unfortunately, we didn't have this. So I wrote to uh, one professor, Professor Maiswarika from Washington University in St. Louis. So in Washington University, her student, Brooke Liang, she, she performed the immunofluorescence studies with the virus. And we further confirmed that, yes, this hydroxychloroquine actually inhibits the Zika virus. So that was one of the drug discovery work we did. And very with very precise multiple aspects, because we performed the docking studies, we performed the simulation studies. Simulation studies in this particular paper was performed by Professor Sanjeev Singh from Gapai University. So he helped us in simulations. And then in our lab, we performed these experiments. And then again, the viral assist. So that was a complete package, what one can think. So this was one of the drug discovery approaches we took. Then my another PhD student, uh, Nitin Sarma, he was working on the annual protein of the virus. So particularly he was working on because if you see this envelope protein, this is domain three, this is domain one, and this is domain two. And this particular disordered region is there, which is not very rigid. You can see here. This is more flexible. This region is very important because what happens that this is the monomer, then dimer is there, and then during the fusion event, the moment the virus goes inside the human cells, it forms a trimer. So that Trimer formation involves a folding back. So when something is not rigid here, you can see the secondary structure is absent here. Means there is no alpha helix and no beta set. This is sort of loop turn or random coil. So this facilitates the folding back because it don't provide a it it don't create the hysteric hindrance. So it's very easy for the protein to fold back. So they make the trimer. So that was our approach to okay, yes, this folding back event if we can stop. So that the virus don't is not able to uh, penetrate inside the cells, and that was one of the very important tasks we did. So Nitin and uh, uh, Pratik, particularly Pratik, performed these docking studies. He performed the simulation studies, theoretical validation. You can see, and then uh, we had the question that okay, yes, theoretically it is working. But what about experiment? So for that thing, we planned the study that, OK, one of the students will go to a lab uh, having the Zika virus culture facility. So Nitin applied this Newton Bhava PhD placement program, a fellowship for four months, to visit University of Leeds in UK. So there, my PhD student went to Andrew Tupin lab. So Andy lab gave us the facility and Nitin performed all the experiments, experimental experiments that, okay, yes, this is actually one of the top fit compound works. Here yeah, you can see the moment you add higher concentration, this NS5 level is going down. So this is another study we took up for the drug discovery perspective, where we took, we started from very large number of compounds, that was the life chemicals antiviral library 
having 26,310 compounds. We went ahead for the high throughput virtual screening, Pre uh, precision docking, extra precision docking, inhibitory screening, and then this experiment started, which was nano luciferase detection assay and plaque assays, Western blots. So finally, we, we proved that, okay, yes, this compound actually inhibits the virus. There are plenty of other data because in one slide, putting all data was not possible. So there's plenty of other questions as well. So, so that those were our drug discovery aspect we took that how to understand the viruses. So these are the several other papers from my lab where we are working on the drug discovery aspect. So that was the first approach, the first goal to answer the to first search something which will be good at any time point of view. On the same time, we kept engaging ourselves in the basic science. So that drug discovery is actually more urgent type of work. But on the same time, there are basic science. What is the safe? What is the aggregation perspective? So for that aggregation perspective, what we did was we found that the Zika virus capsid anchor, there is another peptide uh, just after the capsid protein. So we synthesized that uh, Zika virus capsid anchor. We got the synthetic peptide from uh, Thermo Scientific USA. So we did it commercial synthesis. And then we got the peptide. We performed the aggregation kinetics. We performed the, and there are many probes you can take, like Thyflavinti, Congo rate, and many others. So, and ANS also. So we performed that one. And this is the transmission electron microscope image, which is clearly visible that in this 100 nanometer bar, you can see this, this size here. They form thread-like structures. So one can imagine that these threads are made by this peptide and they are in the cell. And those threads, those you can say fibrils, I mean needles also you can say. So these fibrils, amylate fibrils, they are cytotoxic in nature and this is what I have proved. This is the cell viability assay. And at quite higher concentration, we found that it is actually only 30% viable, means 70% is worth it. So that was a very important work which, which we took as a as a different another approach to understand the virus or the basic science perspective. Further, apart from this capsid anchor, we had uh, seen the envelope protein. NS4B cytosolic region, the pi 2 k ns meter root. And a couple of more proteins we are trying to understand whether they form the aggregates. And these are the aggregates you can see, these amyloid fibers. And the important thing is why we are doing it. So you can see that Zika virus causes microcephaly in the newborn babies. That is the real problem of Zika virus. Among the flu viruses, other flu viruses, including your dengue virus, Japanese encephalitis virus, Vesnil virus, none of them cause this kind of microcephaly with such a aggressive microcephaly. Where the brain size, you see the normal brain size is this, and the microcephaly patient brain size is this. So we had the question that, okay, yes, how they are reducing the size? Basically, there should be some, some cues is happening inside the cells and in between the cells also. So these viral proteins, we believe, means so far many more experiments are required to prove this idea, this hypothesis. So far, we just reached to a point where we found that, okay, yes, the viral proteins and peptides are aggregated. In between this protein aggregation and microcephaly, there is a very long road ahead. We don't know this is the particular reason or not. But we believe that, okay, yes, one hypothesis, because the moment you have a hypothesis, you try to perform the experiments and prove it. So hypothesis is something which is the first stage. Idea, ideation stage, you can say. So we believe that generally this kind of neurodegeneration and such an aggressive neurodegeneration 
may be linked with the aggregation. So towards that direction, we are going to perform the correlation with amyloid beta, which is involved in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So in that one, amyloid beta, alpha synuclein, tau, these all do the neurodegeneration. So if it is following that kind of path, that kind of approach, so these things will be answered in future. So this is one of the, this was one of the approach what we took to understand the basic science of the virus. So this, so this approach is done. Yeah. This amyloid aggregates approach, excuse me. This amyloid aggregate approach. So now we will take up the dark photo. Basically, basic science, how we are trying to understand. So here you can see the first thing, what is dark protein or what is intrinsic disorder proteins. You know, since last eight, nine decades, the protein science has evolved as a structure function paradigm. For any protein to be functional, there must be a structure. So that was the hypothesis, that was the idea which was very well established and that is called when the ideas are established, they are called paradigm. So the structure function paradigm was very well established. For any protein to be uh, functional, they need structure, the structure function paradigm. But recently, since last three decades, another idea came up in uh, came up as a dominant force in the protein science uh, to understand the proteins. Is there are many proteins which don't have structure, rigid structures like this? You can see there is no rigid structure. Here you see there is a clear alpha helix and this is a properly three-dimensional structure. Here there is no three-dimensional structure in this case, in case of this beta cell, which is a disordered monomer. So, and, and this is, here is the simulation of SARS-CoV-2 and SP6 is another example of the protein I'm saying. This is a structured perspective, you can see. There is a clear three-dimensional structure. On the same time, you can see here, the one microscope simulation, of a spike protein, endodomain. Endodomain means if this is the virus, you have seen the SARS-CoV-2 that there is a spike outside, but inside there is a tail inside the membrane of the virus. So this is the inside image. You can say uh, part image the inside situation of this virus. So there is uh, this is disordered. You can see. And very easily you can understand that okay, yes, there is no, uh, there is no significant, there is no, not at all alpha helix, not at all beta seed. This is all disordered. So this is called disorder. Or the dark protein. Dark, it is known because when something is not known very properly, if the confirmation is not having the classical structures, then we don't know what kind of function it is going to what kind of conformations it will take. Or in very simple terms, shape. What is the shape of this uh, region, endodomain of this pipe? And why there are, what is the advantage of being disordered? Like you had seen this, the spikes eternal region. So what happens that when something is rigid? So when something is rigid, for example, if I, if I, so this thing, uh, you can see, this this coil, this you can say alpha helix, right? Uh, you can consider it like this. So this is a structured one, but when it is disordered, then you can see this is extendable to very large radius, and it can bind and it can catch up to another part. So this is the this is the advantage of being the disordered. So here, what happens that here in this particular figure, you can see. This is a three-dimensional shape of the virus, which is a rigid structure. This is a little flexible protein when there is a radius, capture radius is more. So it can bind this partner. You suppose their job is to, their function is to bind the DNA. Then here the capture radius is small and here the chances of binding with this DNA is more. The distance basically, you can, when something is disordered, then it is, can reach out to the partner more comfortably more easily as compared to the one which are very much shorter. 
So this is, uh, and, and in all the proteins, there are mix of these things. Some regions are very rigid, some are regions are disordered. And that is why in a classical structure function sense, we can say that, okay, yes, these are the loops. For example, here, these are the loops. This is a very small loop. Uh, you can say this is a disordered region, but if it is more than 30 amino acid, that is even more comfortable to say it is a disordered region. So when these loops are much bigger, then they are known as the disordered regions. Now, how I tried to understand the virus, the Zika viruses. So computationally, I and our team has predicted the all 10 proteins uh, propensity to have the structure or not. So this is here, you can see, this is the point more than 0.5 reason. 0.5 scale is disordered and less than 0.5 scale is ordered. This is the capsid protein. This is a disordered propensity, very simple computation and graph derived computationally. So, and in the same way, we performed the predictions for each and every protein of this Zika bias. Just to understand means what are the reasons which get this? This, this was the goal. And even more important as this computational study, we synthesized this capsid protein where we are we found that just predicted disorder is there. We got the synthesis from thermoscientific USA and then we performed the experiment in the lab. And we found that yes, this is giving a very classical disorder type uh, CD spectra with a 195 to 200 nanometer range it is showing in the CD spectra, you can see. So this is disordered actually, there is no order. Disordered means, again, I will show you. Yeah, this, this one. Disordered means this kind of conformation. No classical structure. This is what I mean. And when you take the experimental data, the spectra, CD spectroscopy gives this kind of spectra for the disordered peptides and proteins. Similarly, uh, uh, no, uh, then the next question was, if it is disordered, then what is the propensity to form the structure? Means in natural, it is lying without any structure. And what about any propensity to form the structure? And for that, we have performed the experiment, another CD experiment where we prepared the liposomes with DOPS lipids. And it, it forms the alpha helix where you can see that in general, 208 and 222 nanometers uh, signatures are there. Similarly, we performed the experiments on this, this prediction where we, we took the NS4A protein 1 to 48 amino acid. In this one, we uh, found that yes, actually this is disordered and this also forms alpha helix. This is the classical spectra of alpha helix. And actually in native condition without having interaction with anything, this is disordered. Just like the one I had shown you, the spike C terminal or endodome. Further, we had uh, another uh, question on the protease enzyme. So this is the protease enzyme and this is the ns 2 cofactor reason. This, this green one. Our computational study has predicted it to be disordered. So we synthesized this peptide and then we performed the experiment and we found that yes, actually it is disordered. So this was another discovery we made. This NS2B cofactor region of the NS2B NS3 protease complex is disordered. The reason which binds with the protease, that uh, nearly 50 amino acid region. So, these were the other works what we are what are published in the, the from other lab. Then finally hitting the nail. The one very fundamental question I asked or I was talking about was the viruses are very limited in number. Uh, means uh, viruses have very limited number of proteins. As 10 proteins we had seen in the case of Zika virus. So 
I had the hypothesis that they are since they are very less in numbers, so they should be very good collaboration, very good teamwork. Because without a very good teamwork, they can't hijack the whole human machinery, or they can't disturb the whole. Uh, no, they can't disturb the human machinery. So those very established system. So for that thing, what we did is we had already this N S four A internal reason. Uh, this is the N S four A protein. You can see. Uh, this internal reason we proved previously that this is disordered. It has three transcript membranes. One is this, which is uh, crossing the both sides. Second is predicted transcript membrane, and the third is another transcript membrane. So this was the NS4A protein, and NS4A is actually involved in the replication complex formation. So as I was telling that there are seven non-structural proteins in this virus. Dengue or Zika or JV um, or Vishnu viruses. So all these live viruses have seven non-structural proteins. They make a team during the replication complex formation. So I had a question that how they are interacting. This NS4A, how what is the quantitative output of this activity? So we we had in the lab an uh, NS3 protease and NS3 helices. So NS3 protease activity already I had shown in my second um, maybe four six slides where we had seen that we had purified that protein previously. NS3 helicase was prepared by uh, my former PhD student Deepak Kumar. So where NS3 helicase is having helicase activity as well as ATP activity, and both are coupled. So we optimize this helicase activity and the ATP activity using the enzyme kinetics. After this, we performed the uh, experiments. For example, this particular experiment, where we have taken the NS3 helicase and, and NS4A N-terminal. So we performed the binding uh, kinetics, binding equilibrium experiment, and we found that its affinity is very high. It has just, it is in the range of 80 nanomolar, which is too high affinity. So this was very high affinity with the helicase enzyme. While when we performed the experiment with the protease enzyme, it was not binding. We couldn't get any uh, reproducible data. And then we performed the helicase enzyme assay. We found that, yes, actually, the moment you increase the concentration of NS4 enzyme, your activity is going high for the helicase. On the same time, when we performed the experiment with this protease enzyme, this is the AMC release kinetics um, of the protease assay. It didn't change at all. So ultimately, we found that this this NS4A N-terminal region, and this is the helicase enzyme. It actually NS4A N-terminal region X is a cofactor. So that was one of the very good discovery we made. That what is the co what are the additional cofactors of the enzyme? So you can see that the viruses, viral enzymes helps means the other proteins. At least this particular N S four A protein has the viral helicase enzyme to have even higher activity when it is needed. So this is a very uh, this is an example where we found using those very precise experiments uh, that it actually acts as a cofactor and enhances the activity of the enzyme. In future, we are also trying to understand. Are trying to uh, because this hypothesis is with us that okay yes these viral proteins should interact should make the team so far it has not been discovered that capsid and envelope proteins interact but we are still as an unbiased researcher we were trying to see that if actually it binds or not so we have this future work in in progress where we are trying to understand these things. So I'm done with that. So now I would like to thank my international collaborators from where in their lab, we performed the viral glasses. So in Andy Treplin lab in University of Leeds, we performed the envelope protein, uh, protein based antiviral glasses on Zika virus. This is Professor Masai from Washington University. So there we performed the protease enzyme work 
where the protease enzyme is already performed at IIT Mundi. And those compounds, we say that, okay, please try that compound on the virus. So her lab tries those compounds on the virus and, and we share the data. Is uh, Professor Vendra Skolo with whom we have collaborated to understand the aggregation perspective in more detail. So on this perspective, this work, these are the people who are responsible. These are the lab members who are the real workforce who do all the experiments, all the theoretical experiments. So the theoretical part is taken care by Pratik Kumar, um, who is a very talented PhD student. In fact, Pratik is in third year, just finished his third year actually, of his PhD, and he published more than 40 publications. So he is the star of bioinformatics work in the lab, and the rest others are experimentalists. And now Pratik has started also learning these uh, experiments. So that's a wonderful combination. So thank you. Thank you very much.